All right, so now we're going to be talking about lessons that Pulp Fiction taught us. So we're going to start with number one, don't do drugs. But if you do, and again, you shouldn't, but if you do, definitely don't mistake heroin for cocaine. And okay, so plenty of self-proclaimed ex experts online debunk elements of that little storyline, you know, saying that the overdose isn't accurately depicted and yada, yada, yada. But let's just assume things work differently in that fictionalized universe or that Quentin Tarantino did inexact research. However you want to look at it, you know, it's, it's, it's just that way in that uh, particular scene. All right, so lesson over with. So we're moving right along. While still on the drug issue, here's another lesson. If you're going to do drugs, only deal with someone like Lance, who actually seems like a fairly honest and even vaguely likable guy, at least. Well, under the circumstances in the movie, that is. It's kind of implied that, you know, he's not that great of a dude. But, you know, he's not exactly a villain either. And I guess you could say that about a lot of these characters. And that that's something that people really don't grasp about the Pulp Fiction uh, film sometimes, or I suppose other Tarantino movies, is that he humanizes the villains and sort of blurs the line between hero, villain, and anti-hero, and all that kind of stuff. And really, that is often what makes a movie, or really any story, kind of interesting. You know, if you don't always have just one-dimensional, this is a good guy, or that is a bad guy kind of characters. But anyway, moving right along, we're getting into learning the art of conversation. That's another important lesson. One of the film's most memorable moments is, you know, the uh, dialogue between Vincent and Jules, where they're talking about, you know, the difference, the differences between fast food in this country or that. And, you know, you've got other fine points of dialogue that really show how life is a lot of pop culture kind of stuff going around. You know, we, we're always... Well, maybe not always, but quite often immersed in pop culture these days. And that was definitely true, you know, f for this universe, too. Uh, so whether they're, you know, discussing brutal shooting accidents, divine intervention, or whether eating pork is dirty, they're, they're always going to be tying in some sort of uh, pop cultural elements into that, too. So the, these two can make any conversation more interesting and dynamic because they have personality. And who wouldn't want to be a fly on the wall in these conversational moments? Uh, also, the next lesson, everything is intertwined and chaotic. Basically put enough characters together and it's like lighting up a box full of matchboxes. Moving along. Don't wave guns around at people. So that sounds like common sense logic, right? Uh, you never know if it might go off, and you could end up cleaning up parts of brain and skull from the back of somebody's car. And uh, who wants to do that? I, I don't think that's an ideal hobby for practically anyone. So moving on, know where you and your trusted partners keep their valuables. So we, we've all seen the scene where Butch is angered, shocked, and dismayed that Fabian didn't take his deeply meaningful family heirloom along with her. You know, the, the watch that was in that kangaroo. So if someone asks you to remember where they have stashed something and, you know, they tell you to take it with you, you should try to honor their trust by following through, especially if it seems like it's very important to them. Maybe even irrationally important to the point where they would actually risk their lives or maybe even yours. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of important to, you know, follow through on that. 
at the same time, there may be another lesson here too. If something is so valuable to you personally, you probably should not entrust others to take care of it, right? You know, tisk tisk. You know, butch. You can't really blame somebody else for that one, dude. So moving along, another lesson that's fairly obvious. Some bedroom kinks should stay in the bedroom and not in your store's basement. And you should always be consensual in your relationships. Mixing business and pleasure is not always good. And some gimps were surely harmed in the making of this film. And next lesson, pooping is a humbling experience that makes you vulnerable to the world around you. This is a very consistent theme for Vincent, who dies on the toilet after Butch shows up to search his apartment for the aforementioned watch. So, you know, he was, he was very vulnerable and, uh, Butch took full advantage of that situation and, uh, you know, some scores were settled, I suppose you might say. And that, that's a little bit of a reminder to, you know, people who are power hungry and power mad. You know, no matter how big you think you are, like how mighty and powerful, you know, you're going to have these vulner vulnerable moments too. You know, like you're going to have to go to the bathroom. You're probably going to end up nude at some point, like if you want to bathe and all that stuff. Because you are human, you know, you're not immortal. You're not uh, above eating foods and possibly getting poisoned through food and drink. You know, that's why throughout history, you've had kings and whatnot who would have people actually kind of test the things that they would consume before they would have them uh, put into their systems. You know, so you could have somebody who was like willing to die for the king or emperor or, or whatever the title is. And uh, yeah, so if you think about it like that, it's it's very dangerous to be so full of yourself that you grab power and make others jealous. Maybe try leading a more humble life, I would say. So I'm obviously extrapolating a lot from the death of Vincent here, but I think I think it's a fair point. So on that note, Pulp Fiction encourages us, encourages us to make other unexpected thematic connections in a story. For example, Butch left his watch on a ceramic kangaroo. The kangaroo is wearing boxing gloves, and kangaroos are known to box. Obviously, Butch is a boxer. Also, later on, Butch is driving and listening to Flowers on the Wall by the Statler Brothers, which has a line about smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. So it's plausible that there are other kangaroo tie-ins, but those are definitely the main ones. So as you watch Pulp Fiction, or really a lot of different movies, of course, you can make some of these connections. And they kind of make the stories a little bit more fun, right? It's like connecting the dots. And for another lesson, sometimes you need others to organize situations for you. Seriously, look at the wolf. On the surface, it seems like Vincent and Jules could have cleaned the car for themselves. Yet the wolf provides a very simple service. He gives them guidance. You know, he... He provides that much-needed push. Oddly enough, if you really think about it, this might make the character seem both very smart and very stupid at the same time, because they really could have done all of that stuff themselves. But, you know, sometimes you just need somebody to tell you what to do and how to do it. So, I, I won't call them, you know, that stupid about that, because they knew that they needed somebody there to call the shots for them. So it's 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 really a, a strange situation. And uh, it's one of those freak accidents that really brought them there. And uh, there's another lesson, know who you're dealing with. Toward the end of the movie, Ringo 
holds Jules at gunpoint, seeming fairly confident that he has the upper hand. However, he does not. Of course, we all know who Ringo is dealing with. And, uh, you know, you've got the uh, bad motherfucker wallet right there. And that's right. That is exactly, you know, who he is dealing with. So lastly, sometimes it pays to embrace technical distinctions. So we know by a certain point that it's not a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. And uh, if you've never heard of a chopper before, go ahead and watch Pulp Fiction. You'll know how the uh, aficionados of choppers will feel about that moment. And all right. Well, that's about it for now. I think I've, you know, discussed a lot of little lessons from the Quentin Tarantino film Pulp Fiction. If you think there are some that I've missed, and I'm sure there are, but, you know, go ahead and uh, let me know. You know, social media, just look my name up. I'm on Twitter and probably a few other places. So, yeah. All right. Well, have a good day.